morning, everyone. <laughs> My name is Brandon Willingham. I am your Duke student for, this, uh, for the next two months. I am from uh, Flint, Michigan in the United States, and uh, I have been very welcome, uh, welcomed here in South Africa. I am very pleased to be at this, um, this congregation at this church. Um, I just thank God that I had traveling mercies. I got here very safely, as you can see. And um, I'm just delighted to be uh, a part of this uh, worship service. So thank you for inviting me. Um, I'm sure I'll meet uh, many more of you after the service ends. And uh, we'll also be reading your scripture for today. Amen? All right. So today's scripture reading is um, John 10, chapter, verses 11 to 18. Do we stand for the scripture reading? No. All right. <laughs> the scripture reads, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one knows, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brandon. And uh, Brandon will be uh, preaching at Thursday's Ascension Day services. And so we look forward to hearing what God lays on his heart. So we are in the midst of this series in which we are exploring the I am sayings of Jesus in John's gospel. And the reason why we're doing this is to try and discover with a new understanding who Jesus is. Not just in a kind of a philosophical sense, but who Jesus is for me. And how does who Jesus is impact my life? And what better way for us to do that than to reflect on what Jesus said about himself? Who did Jesus claim to be? And so at the beginning of our series, we began by talking about Jesus as the bread of life. And we spoke about the fact that Jesus is the one who nourishes the deepest hungers of our soul. And then... Uh, and then last week, we spoke about the fact that Jesus is the light of the world. And uh, Bruce invited us to reflect on, on darkness in our own life. And once we got in touch with the dark places of our own life, to reflect on what it means to say that Jesus is the light of the world. This candle has got such a small flame. I don't think you can see it, eh? but I can see it. It is actually burning, would you believe? So Jesus is the light of the world. Today we are reflecting on uh, the time where Jesus said that he is the good shepherd. And I think we should have a picture of this carving up on the screen. Uh, but this is a carving which uh, sits in my, in my uh, office. And uh, it's, a, it's a wood carving of, of a shepherd standing strong with the sheep kind of right up against the legs of the shepherd, hey? coming, snuggling in for protection and gazing up, uh, perhaps with eyes of love, at the shepherd as the shepherd looks down at the sheep. This carving was a gift given to me by a friend when I turned 40 years old. And um, he, when he gave it to me, he said, I want you to remember that the word pastor means shepherd. And I'm giving this to you to remind you always to be uh, somebody who looks after the people that God has entrusted to your care as a sheep looks after the shepherd. And so if you ever come into my office, you'll see on the little side table the statue here of, of, uh, of the good shepherd, which is a reminder to me of God's calling upon my life. 
I guess the statue reminds me, we can go back to the cameras now, thank you very much. I guess this, the statue reminds us, it reminds me not just of the fact that I'm called to be a pastor, but it also reminds me that in many ways I am like this sheep. And so before we start talking about the fact that Jesus is the good shepherd, I want to invite you just to reflect with me on the, the reality of the truth that in many ways you and I are like sheep. Now that's not such a, a lack of thought to think about, is it? You know, there are certain animals that we would prefer to be likened to. You tell me that, uh, that I'm as strong as a lion. Or even tell me that I'm playful like an otter. Uh, or, or, or tell me that I've got a memory like an elephant. Um, you can even tell me that I'm as faithful as a dog. And, uh, and I'll think that you're complimenting me. But, but tell me that I'm a sheep, and I'm going to think that you are insulting me, aren't I? You're telling me that I can't think for myself, that I just follow the crowd. You're telling me that I need somebody else to take care of me, to stop me from getting lost. You're telling me that, that somebody else has to show me where I find food. It's, it's, not a, it's not a great way to build up somebody's self-esteem, is it? To tell them that they are like sheep. And yet, when we think about it, we know that there are many ways in which we are indeed like sheep. We know, for example, that sheep are easily distracted and led astray. And so often we find that we are like that. Uh, we know what it means to live God's way. Deep down, we know where the good pastures are. But how often we find ourselves straying off down some other path that leads to death. Down some path that leads to the death in our relationships or that leads to a death in our spirit or that leads to death in our walk with God. We, we have a tendency to kind of nibble ourselves lost one bite at a time. We get distracted and wander away. We are also like sheep in the, in the way in which, we, which, in which we follow the crowd. Uh, so many of us want to be found acceptable to others. And so, well, to stick with the animal imagery, we become like chameleons, changing color depending on who it is that we are with, changing our opinions, our views, our actions to fit in with those around about us. And then when we think about sheep, we think about these animals who are relatively defenseless from outside predators and dangers. Our reading spoke about wolves that attack and kill. And isn't it true that so often we feel helpless in the face of the forces around us that are just bigger than we are? Maybe we feel helpless in the face of the violent crime that's all around us, or maybe it's the uh, financial shocks or pressures that uh, are beyond what we can control. Maybe it's sickness or tragedy that comes upon us from nowhere. Maybe it's the political forces that are shaping our nation and our world. We feel helpless. And there are times when we feel defenseless to the assaults of evil and suffering all around us. And so whilst we, whilst we may not be that excited about this imagery of us as being like sheep, I wonder if there's any way in which you can identify with being a sheep. Any way in which you realize that you are like a sheep who needs a shepherd. So just as last week we started by acknowledging our darkness and then moved on to talk about how Jesus is the light of the world, as we acknowledge that we are like sheep in many ways, let's turn now to spend some time reflecting on the good shepherd. What does Jesus mean when he says that he is the good shepherd? We're really going to understand this passage when we, when we understand who it was that Jesus was talking to when he said that he is the good shepherd. And in, in, in verse 1 of John chapter 10, we read that Jesus was talking to the Pharisees. 
We know many things about the Pharisees, but one of the things we know about the Pharisees is that the Pharisees knew their scriptures well. They knew what we call the Old Testament, what they would call the Hebrew scriptures. They knew their scriptures very, very well. And there were many references to God being like a shepherd in the Old Testament. But as Jesus compared himself to hired hands, and as he described himself as being a good shepherd, unlike hired hands which run away at the slightest threat of danger, the Pharisees would have been immediately making a link to one particular passage of Scripture in the Old Testament, which speaks about God as being a shepherd. I want to encourage you to go home and to read that chapter in the Bible yourselves. We haven't got time to read it today. But the passage of Scripture that the Pharisees would have, uh, would have been thinking of is Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. And, uh, and Ezekiel 34 was written 600 years before Jesus described himself as the good shepherd. Um, but in Ezekiel, through the prophet Ezekiel, God speaks and God comes down really hard on the leaders of Israel at the time. And God speaks judgment on the leaders of Israel because they are bad shepherds of God's people. In verse 3 and verse 4 of Ezekiel 34, God says of those bad shepherds, He says, you, you feed on the fat of slaughtered sheep. You clothe yourselves... You clothe yourselves with the wool of the sheep, but you're not feeding my sheep. God says to the leaders of Israel, you don't strengthen the sheep, the weak. You don't heal the sick. You don't bind up the injured. You don't bring back those who have strayed. You don't bother to look for the sheep that are lost. And so God says to the leaders of Israel 600 years previously, He says, you've ruled harshly, you've ruled with force, and so my sheep have scattered, my people are scattered, and they've become vulnerable to attacks from wild animals. There's the reference to the wolves. And in words filled with anger, God says to the bad shepherds of Israel, and even in His anger you can hear His compassion for the sheep, God cries out. He says, my sheep wander over mountains and hills with no one to search for them, no one to care for them, no one to protect them. And so in verse 11 of Ezekiel 34, God says to the bad shepherds, He said, I will remove you. I will rescue my sheep from the bad shepherds. And then, and then God says through Ezekiel, God says something very interesting. He says, I will go and look for the lost sheep myself. I will rescue them myself. I will gather them together myself. I will lead them to good pasture. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, says God in verse 14 of Ezekiel 34. He says, I will seek the lost and I will bring back the strayed, I will bind up the injured, I will strengthen the weak. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. And so 600 years later, 600 years later, Jesus is born amongst us. And, and when he's about 33, he speaks the words that Brandon read to us earlier. He says, I am the good shepherd. I'm not a hired hand. Hide hands run away when they see danger coming because they don't own the sheep. But I, says Jesus, I am the good shepherd. My sheep belong to me and I lay down my life for my sheep. Do you see how Jesus is the fulfillment of Ezekiel's prophecy? That where Ezekiel spoke about the difference between bad shepherds and good shepherd, shepherds, Jesus speaks about the difference between Shepherds who are hired hands and a shepherd whose sheep belong to him. And the good shepherd knows his sheep. He loves his sheep so much that he is willing to lay down his life for them. When, when the wolves attack, he is there fighting them off, protecting them from harm. That's the kind of shepherd that God is to you and to me.
See, here's the thing about how God sees you. God, when he looks upon you, he's not, he's not just interested in, in uh, how much you can do to advance his kingdom. God is not seeing you as a means to an end. God sees you as his beloved sheep. He knows you by name. A good shepherd, when the sheep came into the fold at nighttime, would inspect each sheep for any, um, for any uh, injuries that might be on the sheep. He would look in the mouth of the sheep to see if it was healthy. He would know what the sheep looked like yesterday, and he could compare it to how the sheep look today. And that is how God knows you. He knows everything about you, and he loves you with an unconditional love, and he will never abandon you. This is God's disposition to you. This is who God revealed to us in Jesus Christ is. Now, before we move off this point, I, I want to just invite you to just think about, about the question, do you know the Good Shepherd? Because... Jesus says that his sheep know him. And could it be that today the good shepherd is inviting you not just to acknowledge in the abstract sense of the word that he is the good shepherd, but that he is inviting you to, to draw right up close to the legs of the good shepherd and to gaze up into his eyes of love. And to experience, as if for the first time, or perhaps for the first time, that he is indeed the one who knows you by name, and who calls you by name, and who knows everything about you. Do you know the Good Shepherd? Have you heard him calling your name? Now, just at the point at which we might fall into the trap of thinking that because the Good Shepherd is, is so personally and intimately interested in us, that He is only interested in us. Jesus changes tack. And in John, He talks about Himself as being the Good Shepherd, and then He says this in verse 16. He says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, and I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock, and there will be one shepherd. So who is Jesus talking about when he talks about these other sheep? Well, remember that Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and the Pharisees believed they essentially believed that their God was a tribal God, that God was the God of the Jewish people, but not the God of other people, that God was the shepherd to a particular tribe themselves, and that he was a shepherd who, who loved that tribe, that cared for that flock. Uh, but they believed that God was a shepherd who was not very interested in the well-being of sheep in other flocks people of other tribes, people of other nations. There is this idea embedded in the Old Testament that the Jews were raised up to be a light to the Gentiles and that one day all people would come to Mount Zion and worship at God's feet. But that message had been forgotten by the Pharisees and it had been replaced by Jewish nationalism, which saw other nations as the enemy. And then Jesus comes and he speaks to these Pharisees who see other sheep as the enemy. And he, he, he offers another paradigm. He says that the time has come. He says that he has come not just for the flock, but he has come for other sheep as well. And he's referring, of course, to the Gentiles, the people whom the Pharisees saw as other. Now, I want to suggest to you that we live in a world today which is in many ways just as tribal as the Pharisees were. 
sociologists call our tendency to group into tribes and to separate ourselves off from each other, the process of othering. And othering is the process by which we tend to treat another human being as intrinsically different from us, as intrinsically alien to us. We, we other people who speak a language that is different from us. We other people who are of a different orientation to us. We other people who are of different religions to us or people who look differently to us. And it seems that our world is becoming more and more divided between us and them, this process of othering. And Jesus looks beyond our neat, separated out flocks, and he says, I have other sheep that are not of this pen, and I must bring them also. And so here's the challenge for us, that, that in the tight little fold where we huddle together on cold nights, we, we don't necessarily want those that we have othered to come into our fold. We don't necessarily want them to come right up against us and be in our space. We find it so much easier to be with those who see things the way we do, who have the same politics as us, the same outlook on life as us, the same culture as us. And Jesus says, you are my beloved sheep, but there are other sheep that I must also bring into the fold. The story is told of a rabbi who once asked his students, he said, how do we know when the, the night has ended? How do we know when the night has ended and the day has begun? And the, the brightest of the students offered an answer. He said, well, when I look out at the fields and I can distinguish my own field from my neighbor's field, then I know that it is day. And a second student offered his answer. He said, when I look from the fields and I, I see the houses and I can tell which is my house and which is my neighbor's house, then I know that the night has ended and the day has begun. And a third student said, well, when I look at the animals in the farmyard and I can tell a cow from a horse, then I know that the night has ended and the day has come. And the rabbi seemed to grow sadder with each response, and finally he said to his students, you, you don't understand, you students only know how to divide. You divide your house from the house of your neighbor, your field from your neighbor's field, one animal from another. He said to them, is that all that you can do to separate, to divide, to split the world into pieces? He said to them, isn't the world broken enough, split into enough fragments? That's not the way at all. And so the students are confused and they, they look at the rabbi and they say, Rabbi, if, if that's not how we know the, when the night has ended and the day has come, then how can we know? And the rabbi responded, he said, when you look into the face of the person who is beside you and you can see that that person is your brother, that that person is your sister. When you can recognize that person as a friend, then finally the night has ended and the day has begun. And so what happens, friends, is that as Jesus invites us to be a part of his flock, his spirit of love so works in our hearts that we are healed from our tendency to other. we begin to see everybody with the eyes of Jesus. We see them as our brother, as our sister. We discover our common humanity. And we become God's agents of healing and reconciliation and transformation in a world which is so divided against itself. And so will you commit to that work? Will you be part of Jesus' work of inviting others to be a part of the fold? making space in the sheep pen for them.
allowing yourself to rub up alongside of them, not just so that you can make space for them, but so that you can learn from them the new insights that they bring as they come into the fold. For as we do so, we discover the joy and the life that comes when we are part of the flock that has Jesus as its good shepherd. Let us pray. God, as we come before you, we acknowledge that, that you know us so intimately. You know us by name. And you know everything about us, the parts of us that are broken, as, as well as the parts of us that are whole and alive. And so we come before you and we offer ourselves to your grace and your mercy. God, as we see you looking at a world that needs to come under the care of you, help us to see the other with your eyes of love and of compassion. Help us to recognize that all of us are like sheep in need of the care of the Good Shepherd. God, may we always make space in our hearts and in our lives and in our church for those who need your tender care. For we ask it in the name and spirit of Jesus. Amen.